It's Friday again. Ang bilis ng araw, mga kapatid. Thank you for our online uh, viewers. Those who always join us on our virtual uh, uh, Friday worship service. Thank you for your faithfulness. Binabati ko kayo at nawa ay patuloy kayong pagpalain ng ating Diyos na buhay. Patuloy kayong ingatan at ganun din katagpuin ang inyong mga pangangailangan sa Araw na ito ay uh, magpapatuloy din tayo na kumain ng ating mga spiritual na pagkain. So let's hear the message that the Lord has prepared for us today. We're going to talk about sufferings. What are the causes of this suffering? So just stay with us and enjoy the message of the Lord. We are living in this world, but this is not the life that is prepared for us. There is far better than this. In this world, people die, they become sick, tired, lonely, and grow old. Around the world, we see people starving, suffering with sickness and other kinds of troubles. And some suffer for lack of daily basic necessities like food, water, and shelter. Where is God in all this? Where is God in the midst of COVID-19, this demonic bacteria that took lives without mercy, leaving numbers of families grieving for the sudden separation for the loved ones, while others continue wrestling to recover and survive? Thanks God, lots of people are recovering. Why there is suffering? It's a question being asked by the new believers and the matured ones alike. In this life, we have many questions that we can never answer and problems we can never fix by our own. Nakakatawang isipin kung ano ang aking isinasagot noon kapag may mga tanong na mahirap. I quoted to them Deuteronomy 29, 20, 29 that says, Secret things belong to God. Kesa naman sagutin ko nang talagang hindi ako nakakatiyak, mas mainam, bibigay ko na lang yung verse na yun. There is no way to answer all the questions regarding sufferings but let's see the major causes of this suffering what are the causes of sufferings that is our topic for today number one curse when sin entered that originated from Adam and Eve in the garden of Eden or Eden when they disobeyed God the condition of life became hard. Instead of just reaping the fruits of what the Lord has planted, as we see in the story of creation, Genesis 2.15, the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. God created everything before he created man. Now, after the fall, men eat by means of painful labor. Man has to work more to eat. God's original purpose for man is to live an abundant life. We can see that in John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. Jesus said, My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. Because of the curse, the whole creation groans. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. This 
will happen when we shall be with the Lord. Number two cause of suffering, cult. This is what we call false religion also. They believe in another Jesuses, but it is not the Jesus of the Bible. Who is Jesus Christ in the Bible? Actually, Apostle Paul kept a warning to the Galatians believers. I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let them be under God's curse. The world says all religions direct you to God. But the Bible says Jesus is the way to the Father. That is in John 14, 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And also in Acts chapter 4, verse 12, Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. And again, Cult say, he is an angel. They said that Jesus is an angel. But the Bible say, he is the son of God. And others say, he cannot save. But the Bible say, he is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. That is in John 1, 9. And John 3, 16, again, our memory verse favorite memory verse for God's love the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life whoever believes in the son has eternal life whoever does not obey the son shall not see life but the wrath of God remains on him. That is in John 3.36. Now let's go to number three cause of sufferings. Man failed to do their job with excellence. Let's look the story of the unfruitful fig tree. I call this negligence. Luke 13.6-9. Then he used this illustration. A man planted a fig tree in his garden and came again and again to see if he could find any fruit on it. But he was always disappointed. Why? Finally, he told his gardener to cut it down. I've waited three years and there hasn't been a single fig. He said, why bother with it any longer? It's taking up space. We can use it for something else. Let's move on to verse 8. Give it one more chance. The gardener answered, Leave it another year and I'll give it special attention and plenty of fertilizer. If we get figs next year, fine. If not, I'll cut it down. Marami ang namatay sa COVID-19 dahil na rin sa kapabayaan ng mga taong may kapangyarihan sanang umakulah nito. Marami tayong narinig tungkol dyan. Are you doing your part to the task that is interested to you? Baka isa tayo sa nagiging dahilan na nadadagdagan ang hirap sa mundo. Huwag nating sisihin ng Diyos at sabihin siya ang may kagagawan ng mga paghihirap na ito dahil wala sa kanya ang problema. 
He is God. His ways are perfect and just. The rock, His work is perfect. For all His ways are justice. A God of faithfulness and without iniquity. Just and right is He. He is almighty, all-powerful, yet He is merciful. He is God, sovereign, yet He can help us. And He is able to do that. Psalms 18.30 God's way is perfect. All the Lord's promises prove true. He is a shield for all who look to Him for protection. And those who trust in Him shall never be put to shame. What are the reasons why men cannot perform their duties well? Lack of knowledge? Unfit to the job? We all agree that we need a right person for a right job and a right place for a right time to have the best result. What are the things that motivate you to do your job? Is it salary increase, promotion, faithfulness, accountability, or napilitan ka lang because nobody wants to take that job or nobody wants to do it? As believers in Christ, we should know who is working with us and for us. Philippians chapter 2 verse 13 For it is God who is working in you both to will and to work according to His good pleasure. So whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus. We should do our best. Let's put our heart in everything we do. Wala yung trial lang, kundi bawat pagkakataon na may bigay sa atin, samantalahin na natin. Gawin na natin yung tama at mainam. Either that is a responsibility, duties, and obligation, may bayad o wala. We have to do it with our heart. Love your work and praise the Lord. Another reason for a poor performance is we miss the mark. This is negligence part two. Distracted to many things which are not the right priorities. Minsan may mga bagay tayong pilit na tinatapos only to find out later na hindi naman pala kailangang tapusin agad or madaliin. May mga bagay naman na dapat nang unahin pero nagiging huli. This one also is a cause of suffering and another reason is not serious. We are accountable to our Creator for whatever entrusted to us. For nothing happens by chance or accident. For every effect, there is a cause. Either you are the one who decide for that thing or you've entrusted to God for Him to do it for you. Proverbs 16.9 reminds us, The mind of man plans his way but the Lord directs his steps. If we neglect the Lord's guidance, the outcome is not fulfilling or not satisfying. Woe to them, for they have strayed from me. Destruction to them, for they have revealed against me. I would redeem them, but they speak lies against me. Hosea 7.13 Let's see this illustration. Some causes of car accidents are a drunk driver, speeding, engine malfunction, and distractions like talking on cell phones, messaging, 
eating and talking to passengers. Adjusting audio controls. Kaya, don't talk to the driver. Let the driver talk to the passenger so the passenger will not sleep. Isa pang pagpapahirap sa tao ay ang kawalan ng pananampalataya sa Diyos. Psalms 14.1 Only a fool would say, there is no God. People like that are worthless, they are heartless and cruel and never do right. Romans 1.18 For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth why is it that the wrath of God is revealed against ungodliness Romans 1 19 here is the answer because what may be known of God is manifest in them for God has shown it to them for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse, because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile. In their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible men and birds and for footed animals and creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness in the last of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worship and serve the Creator rather than the Creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Hebrews 11.6 Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to Him must believe that He exists. Number four, major cause of suffering spiritual warfare actually many people don't believe this but there's a real warfare there's a real battle going on in the spirit realm let's read Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 to 18 please bear with me this is a little bit a long passage but I know it's very powerful and we need to hear this last of all i want to remind you that your strength must come from the lord's mighty power within put on all of god's armor so that you will be able to stand safe against all strategies and tricks of satan for we are not fighting against people made of flesh and blood but against persons without bodies, the evil rulers of the unseen world, those mighty satanic beings and great evil princes of darkness who rule this world, and against huge numbers of wicked spirits in the spirit world. So use every piece of God's armor to resist the enemy whenever he attacks. And when it is all over, you will still be standing up. But to this, you will need the strong belt of truth and the breastplate of God's approval. Wear shoes that are able to speed you on as you preach the good news of peace with God. In every battle, you will need faith as your shield to stop the fairy arrows aim at you by Satan. And you will need the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god verse 18 pray all the time ask god for anything in line with the holy spirit wishes 
plead with him reminding him of your needs and keep praying earnestly for all Christians everywhere that's why in GCI we have this regular prayer meetings now since the lockdown started we have daily virtual prayer meetings in every center and we also have our um, our um, don't watch prayer ginawa natin mas uh, madalas ito kesa sa dati because we need to pray let's repeat verse 13 so use every piece of God's armor what are those God's armor given to us the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, the belt of truth, the helmet of salvation, the shoes ready to share the gospel, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and all kinds of prayers. Yes, we pray in the spirit. We pray in tongues. That's why I always encourage everyone to pray in the spirit. Pray in tongues. Use the tongue that our Heavenly Father has given you. This is very powerful. To resist the enemy whenever he attacks. And when it is all over, you will still be standing up. That's why there is binding and loosing. That is biblical, Matthew 16, 19. There is declaration of scriptures. The sword of the Spirit is the word of God. Why declaration is also a weapon? You are not just reciting or quoting a scripture when you are declaring the word of God. You are making it true to you to me and to you you are taking it personally to take effect into your life your life saying this is for me I believe and I receive it I use the Word of God to speak over my situation I use the Word of God to speak over my problems this is a part of declaration when you are afraid, you take the scripture and declare it. And you take it personally and you are saying, I am not afraid because the word of God said, those who trust in the Lord shall never be afraid. You declare the word of God to stop the lies of the enemy, to stop the fear of the enemy, to stop his, uh, his attack. To hurt you you have to use declaration here is another example of declaration from the Word of God in the book of Psalms chapter 34 verses 7 to 22 chapter 78 verse 52 and chapter 12 verse 5 you will answer me Lord when I call to you and will give me relief from my distress you will have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You will grant peace in my family, in my land, and no one will cause me to be afraid. You will walk with me and will be my God, and I will be your faithful servant. Very personal. We also resist the devil that is in 2 Corinthians 10, 4, 5. I use God's mighty weapons, not those by made by men, to knock down the devil's strongholds. These weapons can break down every proud argument against God and every wall that can be built to keep men from finding Him. With these weapons, I can capture rebels and bring them back to God and change them into men whose heart's desire is obedience to Christ. We also rebuke demonic attacks. Luke 10, 19. And I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy. Jesus said over all the power, not 
not some of the power of the enemy and to walk among serpents and scorpions and to crush them nothing shall injure you the enemy is not omnipresent and his power is limited but you know he is so active he works double time he frowns like a roaring lion seeking to whom he may devour first peter 5 8 to 10 be alert and of sober mind your enemy the devil falls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour resist him standing firm in the faith because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings and the god of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in christ after you have suffered a little while will himself restore you and make you strong firm and steadfast we must resist the enemy we should not just allow him to come near to us and hurt us so whenever he attacks we must be ready this is what peter was talking all about peter was telling us to be ready all the time to be watchful to be sober and to be alert not giving a hand for the enemy to attack us don't give any foothold to the enemy don't give a hinge for the enemy now we have seen the major causes of sufferings yet we should not forget that suffering and pain produces good results one it reveals who you are the way you handle it your character number two it directs us to god for a total surrender knowing that without him we can do nothing number three is to help others it can inspire others to have hope in god others who are about to give up because of the pain and difficulties they are strengthened and they found new hope because of your experience your life testimony you can strongly encourage them and say you can do it kaya mo yan kapatid i've been there galing na ako dyan. the lord is the one who helped me to overcome number four it gives us a burning desire for heaven minsan kasi nakakalimutan natin na hindi talaga tayo taga rito we are foreigners here not just in Kuwait but we are foreigners in the world yun ang gusto kong sabihin for our citizenship is in heaven and we eagerly await a savior from there the lord jesus christ philippians chapter 3 verse 20 and the apostle paul gave us this additional advice set your mind on things above let's look this advice in colossians chapter 3 verses 1 to 4 if then you were raised with christ seek those things which are above where christ is sitting at the right hand of god set your mind on things above not on things on the earth for you died and your life is hidden with christ in god when christ who is our life appears then you also will appear with him in glory and additional promise after all the sufferings that we've been through romans chapter 8 verse 18 
I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Try to think of all the sufferings, the pain that you've been through, and the suffering that you are going through this time. They are not worth comparing. Di maitutumbas with the glory that will be revealed in us. He will wipe away our tears. Our sorrows He turn into celebration. Pati katawang sa pilitang tumandana dahil sa kahirapan ay magiging parang batang bata. There's joy forevermore. There is peace forevermore. Think about heaven. A place of no more sorrow. A place of no more dying. A place of no more sickness. A place of no more sufferings. A life in Christ is not yet 100% trouble-free and suffering free but if you compare your days of blessing to your days of pain you will be amazed of how good God was to you all through the years start counting your blessings and compare them with your sufferings let's try to do this sleeping time how many hours Eating time, how many hours? Working time, how many hours? Worshipping time, how many minutes? Leisure time, how many hours? Suffering time, including having a flu, cough, fever, allergies, sickness, surgeries, accidents. Now let's see this. How old are you now? Are you in late? 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, never mind the age. We don't want to talk about if we are on that level. Have you taken the calculation total a ratio? Which is longer? Years of sufferings or years of blessings? Mas marami pa rin tayong naranasang ginhawa kaysa hirap, di ba? Mas marami pa rin tayong natanggap na pagpapala kaysa sa pagpapalo. Kahit napakarami nating kakulangan sa Panginoon. At mas marami pa rin araw na tayo ay masaya kaysa sa mga araw na tayo ay kailangang malungkot. Mas marami pa rin panahon ang iginugol natin na mapayapa kaysa nalilito my brethren who do not understand Tagalog I was comparing the years of sufferings and the years of blessing in a man's life especially to us as believers and we found out that the years of blessings outweigh or outweigh the years of pain there's years of blessings are more than the years of our sufferings. Here on earth, God never promised a heart or a life full of singing to be Mr. Friendship and Miss Friendship everywhere. This is not yet possible this time. But he promised that who, those who trust him shall never be put to shame. Those who trust in him will be blessed. Those who believe in him will find the answer to their prayers. The Lord our God is our glory and the lifter of our heads. As he said, those who call upon the name of the Lord 
shall be same. Whatever the situation that you are in right now, suffering, still in trouble, continue to call upon the name of the Lord. Because He promised, Call unto me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver you. He who promised is faithful. He will do it for you. Let us pray. Thank you, Father, for being with us. Because we know that even in the midst of our sufferings and pain, you are there with us. Jesus, you died so that we'll be set free from the curse of sin and death. We'll be set free from all this pain and troubles. And Lord, while we are waiting for that day when we will be totally set free, we have the promise that while going through these troubles and pain, you are with us. And we know that every time when we call upon your name, we'll find refuge, we'll find rest, O oh God. We will find answer to our needs. That's why you've given us also this spiritual weapons so that we can stand and fight the good fight of faith. Thank you, Lord, that in this time of suffering, as we wait for the total victory, we will find rest in your presence. And we thank you that because of you, we can do all things. We can make it, Lord, until the end. Thank you, Father, for the answer of our prayers. Now we know that in trouble or in pain or in blessings, you are with us. I give you all the glory and the praises. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. God bless you. May this message be a great blessing to you.